to the slaughterhouse. Good morning, maggots, and welcome to the slaughterhouse. Today we'll be taking a look at the version 3 size of slaughter and his vehicle, the Warthog. This is an absolute beast of a vehicle and an excellent troop transport. It's fitting that the Warthog has tusks on the side because this thing is armed to the teeth. And unlike the Triple T, this tank is fully enclosed and combat ready. And as for being combat ready, this version of Sergeant Slaughter is ready for battle. His vest has some awesome detail which includes a knife and a bullet bandolier, but I think the most obvious change is that he now has a removable campaign cover. Out of necessity, the campaign cover is sculpted to look a little bit more wider at the top and sort of takes away that defined lemon squeezer look. Along with the dark brown combat vest, Sarge is now rocking some brown fingerless gloves and a really awesome looking US Marine Corps belt buckle. Now further removed from his wrestling look and his drill instructor role, this version of Sergeant Slaughter is definitely ready for action. This guy is combat ready, he is wearing the appropriate attire for the battlefield, but he still has that signature Sergeant Slaughter look. While version 3 Sergeant Slaughter has mostly original sculpted parts, he does have legs that really closely resemble the Triple T Sarge, and if they're not a reuse of parts, then they were sculpted almost identical to each other. I mean, they got the same lines down the side, the combat boots look identical. There's minor differences in them, if anything. Whilst it is awesome to have a removable campaign cover, it does tend to have its issues. On some examples you'll find that the plastic is starting to degrade and it has a spotty sort of look to it and if I'm gonna be honest I'm not even really a big fan of the campaign cover itself it can easily fall off and it doesn't look as good as the sculpted one on v1 and v2 so I use this helmet uh, a helmet from sergeant savage and I think it really suits his role as a tank driver. I mean, if he's going to be rattling around in that behemoth of a tank, it's probably better to have a combat helmet anyway. This version of Sergeant Slaughter was only available with the Warthog. If you want a Sarge, you're going to buy the tank too. But in this instance, at least the tank is massive and definitely worth the price of purchase. Out of all the size and slaughter figures, this one is definitely the most easiest to find still in its bubble. But that also has its issues as the O-ring or the hook that attaches to the O-ring are often snapped and broken in the bubble, which kind of defeats the purpose of having one sealed anyway. As for the Warthog itself, there are known color variations. Uh, this one here is more of the olive green, but there is a lighter green version. But that's not the only version of the Warthog that you could get. In fact, there was a pretty awesome mail away version that was on offer. It just had some minute differences. All jokes aside, this is actually a pretty detailed micro vehicle. It's even got the tusks on the side to really give it that signature Warthog look. But that's enough about the micro vehicle, because it's time to go back to the beast. The missile system can be removed from the body of the Warthog, and the missiles themselves can also separate into two separate components. Even with the missile systems detached, uh, the Warthog looks like a pretty awesome troop transport, and at the top you can see all that massive detail that's sculpted into it. The accessibility of the Warthog is what really gives it its play value. You got several points of entry for the troops, as well as several grenade launchers, a top-mounted cannon, and you can never go wrong with detachable missiles. And we also have the return of the removable engine cover. Inside you can see there's fully detailed engine, quite a lot of room in there. The front hatch opens up for the driver's seat. And even though it can take a bit of finesse, you are able to get him in there with either the campaign cover or the helmet on. Now even though this version of Sergeant Slaughter didn't come with a weapon, you aren't without options because you can remove the cannon and I guess have him running around the battlefield using that. Which honestly isn't a bad look. 
One of the most easily missing pieces is that back antenna and if it's there it's probably bent, snapped completely off or at least warping. It's just awkwardly shaped and flimsy. The rest of it though is just pretty much perfect. The only flaw really is that antenna. The details on the back are beautifully sculpted and we also get a return of that awesome toe hook too. But I'm honestly surprised there aren't any foot pegs back here for troops to hold onto or even on the side for that matter. Now as detailed as the exterior of this beast is, the real fun is inside. And there's a, really a lot going on in there so let's take a look. Now the easiest way to do that is to look at the internal shell on its own. Uh, and what you can see is there's really a vast amount of space in there in the back for the troops but also some really really detailed dedicated seating areas and I was honestly surprised about how much unused space there was behind the engine as well as the driver you also have a place for whoever's using the cannon the missile guidance system operator plus space for at least six other troops it's honestly mind-blowing to see how much detail they've put into this considering that you're not even going to see a lot of it anyway once the shell's on. Like there is minute details down to buttons and dials and circuitry that you're just not going to appreciate without actually having taken it apart. Even the missile guidance system has stickers on there that really help to bring it to life. And if I've got one complaint, it's that they didn't add any further stickers to the back. How cool would this area have looked if it was used for mission debriefing or showed some sort of schematics uh, or a computer console, anything just to really make that area pop. And considering how much sculpted details went into the Warthog, a few stickers really would have made it come alive. As for sculpted details, there's this little thing here. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's directly under where the cannon is. So I like to pretend that it's some sort of energy source uh, or a power coupling that would link up to the cannon above, uh, and that's where it gets its power from. And the viewports in the back also offer some strategic advantages. But when your men are ready to disembark, it's as easy as lifting up the hatch. Just like with the Triple T, you had to cut the file card off of the back of the box in order to add it to your collection. And there are some pretty interesting things on here. Secondary military specialty is no longer survival trainer, it's the Warthog AIFV driver. Plus the Warthog is shown with control sticks. And once again, if we have a look at the image of Sergeant Slaughter on the file card, you'll see that there are some differences between that and the figure itself. But unlike the file card art used for V1 and V2, we can actually explain why there are these differences. The original prototype for the Warthog driver, Sergeant Slaughter, used the head and arms of the already established Sergeant Slaughter figures, but used the upper torso at least of the Tunnel Rat G.I. Joe. They even went as far as to use this prototype in the advertisements for the Warthog as well as advertisements in catalogues and magazines and, and so I'm sure this is the reference material used uh, when the artist decided to add size and sorter to the card art. So somewhere along the way they've sculpted a new torso um, and head for Sergeant Slaughter and decided to give him that removable campaign cover. And it's because of that removable campaign cover that you're going to see most of the paint wear coming from the top of the head. Everywhere else seems to be not too bad and that's probably because he sat in a tank most of the time. So that's my look at the version 3 Warthog Driver Sergeant Slaughter. Next time we'll be looking at version 4, the Slaughter's Marauders Sergeant Slaughter. Have a great evening. You're dismissed. Better look out for the Cobra Stiletto. Cobra Stiletto's giving Joe the chase, then blasting his way into outer space. And on the Warthog is Sergeant Slaughter. But nobody beats G.I. Joe, the G.I. Joe Warthog. Over the water and in the fog, the Warthog fights like a rabid dog. But nobody beats G.I. Joe, a real American hero.
Stiletto comes with pilot. Desert Fox with driver. Warthog with Sergeant Slaughter. Time for bed. Right. Jump off off that couch. Turn that television off. Head upstairs. Say your prayers. Brush your teeth. And we'll see you tomorrow, buddy. Okay? That's an order.